welcome once more to the shadow zone and we have a lot to talk about today first of all thanks to all of you who have subscribed to my videos and i thought to thank all of you i would like to make some kind of surprise and here it is surprise it's a big giant egg that's headed to space and not only to space we're going in outer space or at least at least uh, a little bit further away from our home planet Kerbin. And here we are circularizing our orbit. You can see in the top left corner Kerbal Engineer uh, when we hit a periaps of over 70 that I cut the engines. And then it's time to set a, a maneuver node and get to our destination planet, which is in this case. Duna! There we go, we're already in an intercept trajectory. Uh, the little red thing you've seen back in the map view is the trajectories mod that shows me where I'm probably going to land. And here we go, entering the upper atmosphere of Duna. And since we all still have some fuel left, I decided to make some kind of braking burn to reduce uh, my velocity. And now we're on track to descend to the surface and very soon you're going to find out what's in that big old fairing. I am using procedural fairings in this uh, vehicle because of course as we all know the stock fairings are not yet available and that thing that I'm going to show you is way bigger than some KW rocketry fairings will be provided. And we're going to open it! There we go! And it's a rover! Not any rover. This is Leviathan. To be honest, Leviathan 2, because back in version point 2.3 or 2.5, I can't remember. I made another big old rover that had the same name, it was even heavier and it did not work that well. So I created this one and this one works perfectly as I am going to show you right now. This is probably the only rover that you ever need and I'm going to show you why as soon as we have landed. Activated the parachutes. Of course, since Duna's atmosphere is so thin, we are using some uh, additional thrusters to slow down our descent as soon as we reach a certain altitude. And here we go, braking, trying to balance th uh, thrust to weight ratio with our descent so I don't get back up again you know that's would not be very good now would it and we're already balancing on very slowly that should be a safe landing here we go touching down now cutting the engines and we are parked on the surface of the red planet and it's time to ditch the engines and move on. So, what's it like to use this rover or what can this thing actually do? The intention of this was kind of make a comprehensive science platform or uh, exploring platform for, well, almost any body in the Kerbin system. So we have our antennas and we have some solar panels, we have a science lab and we have some probes. And the probes, they're also a kind of a memorial for the beautiful toroidal round 8 tank that unfortunately squad has decided to drop in favor for a xenon tank that will use this model. So. As long as I can, I'm using these little round orange things because I think they're beautiful. 
they're really fun to use as parts and actually they're quite useful because they have a very low profile and you can make beautiful little probes like this. This will uh, be in a polar orbit and will circle around Duna. We have small science packages on board so we can measure temperature, gravitation, uh, the pressure, atmospheric uh, stats and, and so on. We have uh, also solar panels and batteries of course and a reaction wheel. And we have a second pro which we will put in an equatorial orbit. As I said before, this is the ultimate exploration vehicle, so we already have two probes in orbit. Well, not yet, but we will have very soon. They have a massive thrust-to-weight ratio, uh, something for about 20 or something, so they get into orbit really easy and have enough fuel for circularization burn, thanks to, once more, the round 8 tank that will no longer be available in that form in version 1.0. Which I'm very angry about, to be honest, because there was no need to delete that part or change it for a xenon tank and, well, not just make a copy of it, make it silver and use that as a xenon tank. Would have even fitted better with the current design paradigms, but, well, it's squad's game and they decided it. Maybe they changed their mind, I don't know. But now, the pièce de résistance, kind of. Here we go, we have some another surprise up our sleeves. It's another rover! Well, because Leviathan is a big lumbering beast and sometimes you have to get somewhere quickly and with more flexibility and be nimble about it. So we had, uh, what kind of Kerbal names have I got here? Werwald, Jäger, what are those names? I never heard those before. But there we go, uh, this Kerbal will head into the driver's seat and now we get off the ramp. Which is actually uh, using a stock bearing. I made a bearing out of the tiny rover wheels and some stock parts. And yeah, so this is a stock bearing that keeps the ramp in place with the Leviathan. And maybe we can get back up again and close the ramp and the hatch and use it somewhere later. Well, we're gonna find that out. But first it's time to test this little rover, which is a little bit, well, not as wide as I would have preferred. I really prefer rovers with a wider wheelbase so that, yeah, you can see it already here, it's wobbling around at higher speeds. So you really have to be careful and so it's maybe not a good thing that I added additional ion engine boosters, but, well, I thought they looked cool. A view in the interior, we have atmospheric sensors, seismic sensors, gravitational sensors, temperature sensors and two mystery goo canisters. The only science equipment that's not on board is the Science Junior Materials Bay, which is only available on the Leviathan itself because of its size. So this here is kind of the, whoa, careful now. This here is kind of the science gathering vehicle that drives around maybe from one biome to the next quickly and then get back to the Leviathan, which then can transmit the data back home or somewhere else, or if that uh, little scout in, um, encounters an area where it maybe is useful to also use the Science Junior, then the Leviathan can follow there and collect the science as well. But since our test is uh, has been successful, we are going to try to head up back up the ramp, and of course my driving skills letting me down here almost well it's well to be honest it's not that easy to hit that thing because the camera is not very helpful and the collision mesh is yeah meshed up ha <laughs> ha and we're trying to hit the docking port on the ramp so i thought i was clever and here i got a short well scare 
but fortunately it was just the decoupler that I was using to keep the ramp in place inside the Leviathan. Um, but sometimes it just then explodes for some reason, but that does not uh, well, damage uh, the uh, vehicle in any other way. So we're slowly heading up using just the iron engines to uh, slowly get us into position and we are docked we are back on the ramp the rover is ready to be loaded back into the cargo bay but before we can do that our Kerbal uh, drivers have to get out and get back into their compartments so there we go you had a quick look at the science junior up um, beside the science lab so another one there we go and now it's time to close up the ramp. For this I'm using monopropellant engines which are located on the end of the ramp to provide maximum leverage. Tanks are in the front. There we go. Now I have to switch back quickly to the main vehicle, hit the action group to close the cargo bay and then turn off the engines which have of course their own action group so I can turn them off and on without any interference with the other craft. So, but this still has some more tricks up its sleeve. So let's just try out if we can drive without losing the smaller rover. Yes, we can. So then it is time for our next surprise with this big, beautiful lumbering beast. And some of you may remember, well, I made this 200 ton lander vehicle, which also functions as kind of a cruiser. And in one of their uh, cargo bays, I made something I called an ion bike. Because at that time, I did not like rovers very much, and I used that ion bike to get around. So I thought, well, why not include one as well for accessing well difficult to get uh, to the, the access areas that are difficult to get to here is the ion bike mark 2 which well looks more like hmm, kind of a skiff or a surfboard or something like that and for some reason gets catapulted out of the cargo bay well no matters we can still work with that so here we go, this has, well, it basically just has two ion engines, uh, two mystery goo canisters, a lot of batteries, a lot of solar cells, and, well, some lights so, we're, so I can see where I'm going, but we turn those off here so we don't use our power too much, our electricity, of course. So some meters back there, there we go. Just have a look around, we've got the thermometer, the pressure sensor, the gravioli detector and the seismometer. And of course the atmospheric sensor cone. So let's get head back to the Leviathan and of course this means getting to the tricky part, which is landing back inside that cargo bay. And of course since that thing on Duna has a thrust to weight ratio of, well, 1.08 or 1.05, 1.11 or something. You can see it in the top corner. Uh, you really have to be careful with the throttle so you don't get too high up or well sink too fast. So here we are trying to get back into our cargo bay, and of course it's well. Doing it backwards has its drawbacks, of course, so I thought, well, just screw it, let's do it on the front side. Trying to get back inside. Slowly, slowly. Nope, that was not it. But maybe this time. Whoop, 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 not break anything. No, don't, don't break. No, you don't break anything. Excellent. So, we are parked. Will that work? Well, let's see. Let's just get out of that and get back in and close the cargo bays back up. 
Dear Mr. Kerman, please get back into your crew compartment. Of course, this vehicle is able to carry 32 Kerbals, 16 each in that big crew compartment, and additionally the pilot and maybe if you keep them in the lab all the time, uh, two more scientists. And there we go, Leviathan heading along the surface of Duna with its precious cargo, the small rover and the small iron bike. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or uh, something to t uh, tell me, just leave a comment below. Thanks for being awesome. Thanks for uh, watching my videos. And of course, as always, if you like to try this out, this is pure stock and I will provide a link to the craft file below in the description. So once again, thanks for subscribing, thanks for watching, goodbye.